Hello and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be doing a preview. We're going to look forward into the Manchester City Fulham game Saturday 3pm I believe so we'll be able to watch it on television but nevertheless it is happening. So I thought the best thing I could do would be to bring along my good friend and fellow Football Daily colleague Henry Hill, Fulham fan of course, uh, and get his opinion on the season so far, how the transfer window went and where he sees this game going i think we'll have a lot of things in common when it comes to the game at hand but uh, it'd be good to get a different perspective because obviously i'm not too well versed in fulham i'm very selfish as a football fan i keep everything manchester city so it'd be good to see uh, how the season's gone so far for our upcoming opponents so henry hill so even though i've already seen you today henry first <laughs> off how are you doing I'm unbelievable. To be honest, I was at Sky for so long, I just got home and was mm. like, I want an Indian takeaway. So oh, that's yeah, what I did. Yeah, you got you a know? takeaway. How, how was it? What did you get? What was your order? No, it was it was, it was was really poor. I got oh. a lamb lamb chop uh, passanda or something like that. But okay. we've agreed as a house, this one will not be getting our business again, sadly. <laughs> okay, okay but, that uh, bad. Yeah. But no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it wasn't good. <laughs> you know, the thing is, on, on on Uber Eats, it said it was like four stars. But on Google reviews, it said it was three and a half stars. My friend once told me you should never go to a restaurant which is less than four stars on Google. And I actually think it's a pretty good metric. It's a pretty good metric. I think my, my, my barometer is always the, the hygiene scale. If, if they're not a five, they're <laughs> never getting my business. <laughs> that's good. I think that yeah. I think that's fair enough. Um, but anyway, uh, I don't know how to segue hygiene scales into Fulham versus Manchester City, but that is what we are talking about today. Let, let, let me tell you, James, it's an unhealthy lineup for Fulham because it's not going to go down well. I don't. <laughs> there think we go. That, there that we game. go. Yeah. So first off, let's let's put the game to one side for now. Let's talk about Fulham. Uh, transfer window is near enough done. How do you think your business has has gone so far? Obviously a very big exit, some potential big exits that haven't happened, uh, probably to your, you know, well, definitely to your to your benefit. Um, but yeah, your opinion, how's the transfer window been for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, losing Mitrovic is obviously gutting, certainly in the way that he did go. I think 52 million is pretty good value for him, uh, all things considered. Um, but the way he, you know, tried pushed for that move in the fashion that he did is a bit sad considering everything that he meant to the club yeah and it's left us really short up front the the additions have not been particularly inspiring i think castagna there's a reason he was part of the leicester squad that went down Raul jimenez didn't score a single goal in the league last year forgive me for saying it he's just not been the same guy since that really unfortunate injury mm. although you know he looks okay in pre-season adama Traore, i mean there's a reason he's at Fulham now and not still at Barcelona. If that yeah, makes sense. Free transfer as well. Yeah, uh, I think I, I clearly there's some like money issues and they're clearly trying to pinch deals uh, where they can. I like the Calvin Bassey move. We needed a centre half, but he went and got sent off in his first game. I'm hoping that we get another kind of attacking option in through the door before deadline day. But I mean, listen, the positives are we've still got Leno in goal, who I think is just un. Believable. Mm -hmm. We've still got Polina in midfield, who looks like he's loving it. And we've still got Marco Silva, and he is really key because I think he's an exceptional manager. And he could have been maybe tempted by the riches elsewhere, but we've got him, and he's still here for now. So I'm, I'm just grateful for that, really, because with him at the helm, as we've seen in the early results, Fulham are capable of upsetting and surprising people. So, yeah, I'm... Um, it's a very lacklustre window. It's very lacklustre. I saw Doogie put us 19 out of 20 in terms Ooh, of windows so far. That's a little and harsh, I, I think. Yeah, I think it's a little harsh, actually. Uh, 19 out of 20. But I can see where he's coming from. But hopefully, with a bit of last day magic, we can we can get somewhere. I just don't think any of the additions are like major first team um, breakthroughs, if that makes sense. I don't think any of them right, elevate this team to the next level. So... But at the same time, I think sometimes you have to accept a season of mediocrity and that might be what's lying away for Fulham. And I don't mind that necessarily because I think people forget it's just a blessing to be in the Premier League sometimes. Well, I mean, you haven't fully spent the Mitrovic money. So I think anyway, so you're kind of still in profit for this season. So I couldn't, I can imagine that you go back into the transfer window, just dip your toe. And obviously we've seen links with 
Callum hudson Adoy, a Wobi, some attacking flair anyway. Obviously, those two players, I don't know how you feel about them, but Callum hudson Adoy is a bit of a mystery still in terms of what he could provide over a season, where a Wobi despite his kind of injury issues, you know, could provide very, very, you know, to be a very good player for Fulham. Um, but yeah, let's uh, move into, as you said before, you've, you've, you've kind of already done it this season a few times. You've been the upsetters. Uh, how do you think your start of the season's been? Because for me, I, you're one of the more impressive teams to kind of, I said, the middle Premier League teams, let's say. Uh, yeah, you've been one of the most impressive, I think. Look, four points in the three great games is absolutely fine. Okay, Leno saved us a lot against Everton. But still, that's a big win on the board. Could mean a lot come the end of the campaign. Uh, Arsenal, no one's expecting us to get a point there. I didn't even expect us to get a point there, quite frankly. We took an early lead within one minute and have held on for a long time, showed a lot of grit against one of the best teams, uh, well, one of the top two teams in, the U in England, and then managed to even come back with 10 men, show more resilience at the end. I mean, that's just such an epic point. Against Brentford, we were looking good until Issa Diop kind of screwed everything up and then it sort of fell apart from there. But yeah, four points after two games. If you offered me that at the start, of the, uh, three games, sorry. If you offered me that at the start of the season, would have bit your hand off. So yeah, this is a free hit against City and I don't mind that. Also, we've upset we've upset Spurs in the League Cup, which is always a positive as a, as a London-based sort of football fan. True. Yeah, you've got your, your London derbies covered this season already. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I would love to say, for, just for you, Henry, that I could see you upsetting us uh, in this game coming up. <laughs> but the kind of history behind this game doesn't really favour you at all. Your last Premier League win came in 2009. Your last Premier League draw against City came in 2011. Uh, and since Pep took over, it's been an aggregate score of 24 to 3. So... It's real doom and gloom uh, from Fulham's side of things. So I really think you have to kind of look past this game, you know, just just kind of pretend it didn't happen and just just let it be whatever. Especially <laughs> as well, I forgot to mention, Marco Silva uh, has lost the most games to Pep Guardiola. All 11 games that he's played, obviously not just at Fulham, uh, have been losses. So, yeah, it's really, really uh, not, <laughs> not looking good for you in terms of the history of this fixture, especially we've just come back of a treble, Everything's looking quite good for us. We, we've kind of got ourselves out of some sticky situations with like, I, th I genuinely think Burnley and, and Sheffield United were sticky situations because mm. they're teams we expect to roll over, but they did perform very well. They gave us challenges that we probably weren't expecting. So I can imagine a similar thing with Fulham. But yeah, the history, let's say, is not uh, not there. But if you were to get a point, if you were to get three points, where do you see yourself getting them from? Oh, I wonder if that 2009 victory was the famous one where we had Diamante Camera scoring the winner, the, the big 3-2, which kickstarted Let me Fulham's, have a Google. Let me have a Google. <clears throat> which kickstarted our great su survival run. But, I mean, while you're looking that up, yeah. I mean, the thing is about Fulham, last year we were in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup having a cup run, going, and we took it to Manchester United. Like, we were playing good football. It's not as if we're just completely regressed as a side. I know we've lost a few bodies, but we are capable of playing good football that can cause team teams mm. out the top a lot of problems. Sheffield United showed that you can frustrate Manchester City, and if you catch Haaland on an off day, you can keep the scoreline tight. So I think we we are showing more of an ability to do that part of the game, and we're also much better going forward than them. So I think as long as we just limit the individual errors, and as long as we can kind of... Just hold on. I went up to City a few years ago to watch Fulham and Tim Ream got sent off in the first 10 minutes and it was just basically a training game after that. It was so boring. Mm. If we can just hold on and not make those kind of mistakes, then I do back us to at least frustrate City. Do I think we're going to win or get a draw? No, but I didn't think we'd do that at Arsenal and we did anyway. So we've got the we've got the cal calibre, quality and experience to do it. That's all I'm going to say. It's not beyond possibility that we can get a point here and I don't think it would be a disgrace from a City end to draw at Fulham to draw for them yeah it's one of them ones where it is a bit of a free hit it's it's kind of you know you lose oh well it's city if you get a draw you know it, it's kind of continuing this momentum in terms of upsetting big teams and if you get a win that's you know even more so with that um i just did a google on, on the on the on the game it was 3-1 at the etihad uh apparently we left robinho on the bench 
Uh, Clint Dempsey <laughs> scored twice, and Dick, Dixon Atuhu was the with the third, with uh, Stephen Ireland getting one back from us. So yeah, it was a uh, wow. Good times, time good then. times. Very different time. But right, we, I kind of, I don't really want to put it on you because it, it, it might be a little bit harsh, but I'm going to ask anyway, what do you think the result will be? Um, 3-0 City. There you go. Is that being pessimistic as the City, official wow. Fulham representative? Is that being bad? Um, no, I think that's, I think that's I think fair if enough. You, if, you, if, you asked a, if you asked a Burnley fan before their game, if you asked a Sheffield United fan before their game what the score would be and then told them the result, I think they'd be happy. I think they'd probably more go along the lines of 4 nils, 5 nils. So, to, you know, you never know what could happen. But better to be pessimistic than optimistic, I think, with these kind of games. Okay, okay. I, James, I'll go for my 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 head says 3 nil, but my heart says 1-1. One, one. We sneak a draw. There you go. Oh, I like it. Who's who's going to get the goal then? I can see Tom Kearney maybe popping up with some kind of uh, drive from distance. You know, he does step up. I mean, those are the type of goals we usually concede. I remember, I think it was a game against Bournemouth. Uh, Adam Smith, the player who never scores. It's always the players who never yeah. score. Score an absolute screamer against us. But um, yeah, I mean, if it is going to be a 1-1, I can see an outside of the box screamer from a player who's you know, never scored for Fulham before getting it. Um, Yeah, I think for myself, I'll go for... I think we found it more difficult than we thought with um, other Premier League teams. I think Newcastle, we expect it to be difficult, but we managed it very well, where I think we actually managed the games against Burnley and Sheffield United worse, because I think our kind of egos maybe got ahead of us. I do think we'll win. I think we've been very solid, but not kind of clinical and ruthless as we've been uh, in previous seasons and previous games. So I do think it'll only be maybe 2-0, maybe a 2-1. Something quite mm. tense, something quite, you know... It's going to be an uncomfortable watch, I do think, for Man City fans. But this uh, brings me to my little game that I've got prepared for you, which when I when I realise uh, how little effort I've put into this, it really comes in because I keep <laughs> finding new answers for this. I'll set you the challenge of finding three players that have played for both Manchester City and Fulham. I think two are very reasonable. I think you'll get them straight off the bat, but I think a third might take you a little while. Oh my goodness. I'm blanking so hard. You might have to edit uh, elements of this out. <laughs> so, um, is Casey Keller in goal? One of them? Does that count? Wait, Casey Keller? I have K- K- Casey Keller. K-A-S-E-Y. No, no. Oh. I've, I've never heard of that man before. Oh, um, he, he looks like a PE teacher. He looks amazing. He does. Uh, oh, my God. Sorry, James. It is. I was up at five today. That's so right. I'm just... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a yeah. clue. Two have been recent. One currently plays for you. Um, and one you were very sad to see go. Oh, Tosin. Tosin is... We bought Tosin from you. So, yes, does that yes. count? Yes, that does count. He has played for both of us. He was one of the players okay. he got. He, I, think, I, th- I don't know how many Premier League games, but his, his debut was in the Champions League for us. Nice. Okay, so I'll take one. that. Is Dixon Atuhu one? Dixon Atuhu is one. I mentioned him earlier yeah. in that game for you. Yeah, no, I, I remember that he came from you. Uh, and then the third one... I think you've got this. I'm thinking of like an old striker, maybe. Um, did Mal Bronk play for you? No, he didn't, did he? Oh, give me one more clue, please. Old striker... Okay, this is... this is. I haven't meant giving you a clue for this player before, but old striker is a good line to go down. Let's just say that. He's, it's not Bobby Zamora, is it? He didn't it play is, for City, did it he? It isn't Bobby Zamora. I uh, oh. think older. Older? Older. Brian McBride. Brian. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he definitely didn't play for you. I look, I very really... prolific. Very prolific. Prolific? Very oh, Sahar. prolific. Louis Sahar. Louis Sahar. No, not Louis Sahar. That was Man United. Oh yeah. Um, where, do we, where do we had a prolific striker? We had I don't know how prolific he was with you, but his, his rapport within the Premier League is extremely prolific. Um... I don't. I give up. I give up. I, I can't you give up. 
Ah, there's, there's, there's two that I, I've alluded to. One of them, you're going to kick yourself. Uh, Patrick Roberts. Yeah. 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 Um, and the other one I was, I was saying, the prolific older, older <laughs> statesman, uh, Andy Cole. Oh, that's fine. I don't mind yeah. that. That's 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 fine. Patrick yeah. Roberts is more annoying. Patrick Roberts is yeah. more annoying. Yeah, the, I, I expected you to get toasted and, and Patrick Roberts and then kind of deliberate from there. But I, I'm going to give you the massive benefit of the doubt because I know you've been up since five and then working <laughs> since seven this morning. So I'm I'm never I'm not going to hold it against you. Uh, a, a few fun a few funny ones that I thought were in there. Uh, Wayne Bridge, I, I didn't realise he, he uh, played for you. And Seko yes, Fafana, yeah, didn't realise Seko Fafana had, had made that route as well. As in, Obviously, he's just gone to Saudi in, Arabia. As in that that Seko that, Fafana, that Seko Fafana, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that either. That's yeah. surprise. But yeah, I, I mean, if there is any more uh, anyone watching that that we've kind of missed here, I put the list of what the ones I found. Uh, but if there's any ones I missed, please let me know. But Henry, thank you very much for for coming on the channel. Thank you for being my first guest. This is, uh, this is this is a ceremonial moment for myself. Well, I hope future guests are better than me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <just> no. <laughs> Impossible. Yeah, that's all I can say. James, thank you. Citizen Wayne is a banging channel name, and yes. I wish you all the best been, with I've your been, endeavors. I've been sitting on it for way too long without making a channel, without making any content. So we're just putting it out and see what happens. Um, but actually, what what do you have to push? Your Twitter. I've, I've obviously got you a little handle thing but is there anything you, you want to push anything personal you want to push uh my tiktok go check out that oh, yes, i don't post yes, on it but uh, yeah you, you've it, you know, got videos to watch though yeah, i've got i've got things to say i've got videos <laughs> to watch yeah there's there's um yeah there's a few funny kind of like stat wars questions mm. i've boiled down and repurposed a lot of quizzes so, as well a lot yeah of that quizzes. kind of thing i think you're on it as the question master quite a lot so i yeah. am yeah so go check, go there we go um, but thank you very much again for joining me and uh, I think I'll wrap the video up here as well so if you did enjoy the video please give it a like if you enjoy my Manchester City and football ramblings give me a subscribe and uh, give me a comment about how much of a mess this interview is and how I you know should really learn to structure these things before hitting the record <laughs> button um, but yeah thank you very much for tuning and I'll see you later <laughs>